Hey folks, man, this is Monk. We're back with another episode of Classes of Cinematics brought to you by the From the Canopy Network. And I'm joined as always with my co-host, we got Bobby Blockbuster. Yo, yo, yo. Yeah, man. But today we got a dope classic, man. This is going to be Juice. And this film is from 1992 and it's directed by Ernest R. Dickerson. And the synopsis is four Harlem friends, Bishop Steele, Raheem, Dabble, and Petty Crime, as well as Q. <laughs> but they decide to go uh, big by knocking off a convenience store. Bishop, the magnetic leader of the group, has a gun, but Q has different aspirations. He wants to be a DJ and happens to have a gig the night of the robbery. Unfortunately for him, Bishop isn't willing to take no for an answer in a game where everything is for keeps. Yeah, man, and uh, this was crazy, man. I think I was probably maybe first year in high school, I believe, when this came out. Mm. And I do want to um, give a um, shout out to Ernest Dickerson, who is probably started here his career mostly known as a cinematographer, man. Right. And he's one of the best in the business. Um, he was a frequent collaborator with Spike Lee. And he went on to start doing feature films, and some of them are really great, you know, including Juice. But he also did um, uh, Demon Knight. Wow, mm -hmm. dude, that's yeah, crazy, that dude. Too. Yeah, that's crazy. I just caught that, you know, looking at this thing. Juice, uh, Bones, uh, Never Die Alone, which was also a really great film. But the crazy thing, he's directed so much TV as well, man. Almost uh, so many, like, it's going to be crazy tricky to try to go through all those credits but i'll mention some of the bigger ones um he did episodes of uh the wire he's done episodes of dexter he's done episodes of um the walking dead and, and recently um the godfather of harlem man and this mm. guy is just a really dope guy man uh one of the things i can recommend if you can find any dvds or blu-rays that have his director commentary on them you will learn so much man yeah. um, especially even um, never die alone is a great one because he starts off with dmx i think him and the writer of the film and maybe about 40 minutes in dmx just rolls out <laughs> and it's funny because they're sitting there watching the movie dmx and it's like oh we recorded this yeah <laughs> like, <I'm> like, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> like, he, he has no clue what a director commentary is man it's great but, but props to ernest dickerson for putting Hell this yeah. thing together dude not for nothing demon knight is dope as shit but i was also a big fan of bones mm -hmm. i went and saw that in the theater man like yeah. that, that just and it was cool to see just snoop play a completely different role as well you know but mm -hmm. yeah man shout out to him for his uh his directorial um but this is his directorial debut. Yeah, yes. I think so. Yeah, yeah. Um, so let's get a look at this cast as well, man. So we've got um, the late uh, Tupac Shakur, man. Mm -hmm. This was a breakout role, man. This 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 was so crazy to me, dude. I think I think this made more of an impact than his first music when it first hit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like this role, it was just crazy. We also get Omar Epps playing Q, uh, Khalil Kane playing Raheem, Jermaine Hawkins playing still and this is our four guys that this movie is based on mm -hmm. we also get um you know smaller parts from queen latifah in this samuel l jackson um cindy heron from in vogue uh vincent laresca rodamez, rodamez. <laughs> donald Faison pops up and it's just a list of it's you get the stretch rest. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, the rest is a real lot of cameos but i do want to point out i got a little bit of trivia who has been in minister society juice and boys in the hood <laughs> I would have to say, is that is that is it Sam L? No, it's Yo Yo. Yo Yo. Yo Yo, the rapper. Damn. Yeah, yeah. So my boy pointed that out to me. Shout out to Bone Man. <laughs> he told me that um back in the day. But she's in um she's blatantly in um Boys in the Hood. I think she got a couple words in there. Uh Minister Society as well. She's in there. And in this, she's in the background, right at the scene where um uh, Bishop is chasing Q through the party at the end. Like, see, there's, and see, I think that's I think, why I drew a blank because I didn't remember her in this. Yeah. I remember her in Boys in the Hood in well, this, but I, I didn't remember her in up this. On because her and Tupac were dating at the time, you know, oh. and she was in New York hanging out, you know, while he was filming his movie. So, so that, that's how that cameo ended up. That's another thing, too. Like, this whole film was like shot in New York, mm -hmm. like, almost predominantly in Harlem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but, but it's a, it's a dope film, man. Um, so so what stands out to you immediately, man? It, it's, it's crazy. It's a lot. <laughs> for me, you know, I mean, like, for starters, the acting, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying, was was, was very good. Um, 
especially from Tupac, what we get from him, like just to, to see, you know, the transition from, you know, him almost being like laughable, so smiley in the beginning to what we get as the film mm-hmm. progresses, you know what I'm saying? His demeanor change um, was, it, it, it felt really authentic. Um, mm-hmm. In a sense, especially for the way that the the, the story of the film was going, but for me, what what stands out the most is like the the emphasis and the camaraderie and the friendship. Like mm-hmm. you know, we yeah. see how close they are, and like every time I watch this, it just it brings me back to you know my younger days, you know my childhood days. This is like this is a film that you know we you know we almost used it almost as a blueprint of how to live life not saying that we were out there trying to you know go and rob convenience stores and things of that nature but in the beginning the the first about half an hour of this film you see that everybody is the, lo- the loyalty too man the yes camaraderie you know they they, they they you know they rib on each other but they also support each other you know and, and, and even even that like the fact that still this chubby you know, big dude, he's, and, he's and, and he's one talking. of them. He, yeah. They accepted him. They're and not it, just. I mean, it, they're not just sitting there poking fun at him. They're, it gives you the sense, like, hey man, we can we can ride your chops, yeah. but ain't nobody else going to. Yeah, and mm-hmm. not for nothing. Like, yeah. like that, I said, <laughs> in, in the in the first, like, in the, like you are a fat boy. Yeah, you know? exactly. Like, like, it, it, you know, yeah. and that's yeah, the thing that's, too. Like, um, I just I love the like the way that the characters transition because we get it from all of them except for Raheem. You know, what I'm saying because of what happens to him later in the film, but you know. In that first 30 minutes or so, like, dude, every time Steel is on camera, it makes me laugh. Like, one of my favorite parts is when they're all getting ready for school and he puts his bucket hat on doom, 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 with the candy bar mm-hmm. and shit. I love that <laughs> shit. <laughs> I mean, we're getting a glimpse into everyone's family life, but it's also foreshadowing things a bit because um, everyone, there, there's differences. Like, for the most part, I feel like Steel, Raheem, and Q have similar households and, yes. and, and, and you know and you could tell they've got family around them you know they they like i, I was kind of annoyed by uh raheem when i watched it earlier how he was being a dick to his sister is not letting him <laughs> use the bathroom <laughs> yeah. and shit. yeah but, but but you know you you get that there's people around them they they you know you, even even though the dad's yelling at him you you know he cares enough to get these guys up to go to school well, they're held to a standard and, hey, yeah. you're, 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 there's an expectation yeah. level you get up you go to school but 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 then when you see bishop's house it's a little bit weird he gets up on his own he comes out um, I don't know if that was his grandma. Mom. Seemed like grandma. Okay, yeah, because they were way older. Yeah. Um, yeah. So grandma is cooking the breakfast, and then he goes in the living room, and his dad is just sitting there, just like staring blank at the stare. TV. Like, um, and we don't really know what's going on with his dad, but based on later the way Rod, uh, Rodimez is, is, is bullying him, it's like somehow something happened to his dad. And I don't know if it's PTSD or it looks like or, he has the PTSD, but yeah. then they make hints that he was in jail as well. So something might have happened to him. Yeah, or maybe he did a, a you know, some and... criminal stuff or, or just maybe whatever. He he lost his mind and they and they poke they use that to to bully Tupac in the streets like oh yes. you crazy old man you know and and that and, and, and it's so 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 right off the bat they're establishing that this guy's a little different, different. from the rest of them. He's got and... different burdens and different they yeah. also they also give us the sense that you know he lives a little further away than the rest of them the rest of them it seems like they 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 link up a little closer you mm-hmm. know like they're you know more more neighbors in a sense whereas he he has to take a longer walk to get with his folks which mm-hmm. also puts him in the position to get messed with flying mm-hmm. solo by Rodimez. i'm getting um stand by me vibes just the way these mm-hmm. guys are vibing together even a little bit of goonies like it's yes. just it's just guys that are just you know they're friends and they're just hanging out doing knucklehead stuff you know, you know just kind of like a coming of age you know kind of vibe one know? more thing that stands out to me what i another reason why i love the beginning is it even though you know we know as the film progresses there's a lot of things that go mm-hmm. on it instills the fact in the first five minutes that these are still just teenage high school kids yeah so wherever the film goes we don't know as as a first time viewer mm-hmm. you don't know w- which direction it's going to take it take you to but these are still just teenagers you know what i'm saying with the mindset of teenagers Mm -hmm. whether they get into adult situations or you know whatever the case may be and i love the fact that they really instilled that you know Mm -hmm. because you you'll never lose sight of that thought as the movie progresses yeah 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 yeah, it's crazy man um but but it goes wild like so you know it's a plot implies man they you know it's it's really interesting because you know q does have aspirations that's the one character where i think they show what a possible future could be you know he, he's a dj he messes with his turntables and he wants to you know kind of 
you know, maybe explore that career. Because mm -hmm. well, see, before that, they, you know, they, they skipped school mm -hmm. and <laughs> one of the wildest police chases yeah. ever in life. Mm -hmm. So they're skipping school. They hang out at, uh, I want to say his name is like, uh, Sam L's character is like Tootsie or... or uh, I think it's Trip. Trip. There yeah, you go. Yeah, yeah. And... It's, it's like a it's like, like a um, it's like a little like arcade like an arcade pool corner hall, store yeah. pool hall like like a hangout and, yeah. and you know all the all the kids that did school they go there and then you know the police come and they're running for their lives You're, they're running like they just committed a big crime and it's funny as shit because like when 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 they all break off and Q and Bishop are running. Mm -hmm. These two cops, you know, hot on their trail. I mean, and dude, I mean, they're hopping fences, they're doing everything. Yo, the but the was like in the CrossFit. They was on their heels the whole yes, time. The whole time. And, all and, and then not for nothing, you, you, you know, dude, Pac is running in some fucking like eight inch Tims. Yeah. Which, oh man, I know his feet hated him. And then we see in the beginning when Q was getting ready, he had on the Nike boots. Yeah. So it's like, man, wow. dude, I don't know if anybody ever tried to What's do those it. Nike boots yeah, it, looked, it looked like, they oh, looked man, like Nike boots yeah, uh, or they were yeah. Tim Chuckas, but I, you know, I don't know either which way they were boot style shoes. Yeah. I don't know a single person that's ever really tried to run a 40 intentionally in boots. Man, so yeah. I know they, they were running for their life, hopping fences, doing all this and, and the and cops then, was right on them they probably could have cut that a little bit different oh, you know yes, just to make yes. it look more believable and the <laughs> shit that just baffles me is dude there's a part to get away from the cops they have to jump from one building to another i don't know how far <laughs> I, I you know i've i've never you know scaled buildings on it's probably your rooftops plus the other roof well, is lower than the other than the roof they jump from so that's about 10 feet too far then i'm willing to jump from one building to like another dog. That, dude. I, i'm sure i could i'm sure i could <laughs> if i had to but missing school ain't that important <laughs> fucking take me back i mean you see how easily what your know, steals got caught mm -hmm. you see how easily he came back out of the school no, i like, don't even it. think still right yeah still was playing the yeah, game he was still he playing was the game he was like fuck it you know yeah, what i'm saying i'm playing trying, the game. um play street fighting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, but, dude that that was just it was crazy to me I, I don't know the name of the movie i think but, it's called white uh lightning dude I think. but yeah it's like the dude that he he takes over uh you know the jail and it starts the fire it's like yeah top of the world ma top of the world and you see this this rush of adrenaline that that goes through Pac, and immediately after that movie a news clip comes on and then they say that you know they talk about the robbery and that you know blizz ended up getting killed in a police shootout while trying to rob the bar yeah and so white heat white heat okay yeah yeah and then you know instantly like you would think that like you know the the general mindset of everybody else is like, damn, we were just there, we seen that shit going down. But Pac was like, yo, we should have been with him. We could have mm -hmm. helped him. You know, maybe he wouldn't have died. And right then and there, that's when you know you really get that sense. Like, yo, Bishop is is it, he's on he's on a different wave yeah, than so, the rest of his friends. Yeah, because that's the thing. Like, and this is where the acting really shines for yeah. me. Like, where, where we when, when, this is when Pac starts eating up the scenes because. You know, says the rider man, and, it's, and then you know he's looking out the window after they see the news clip. I'm like, man, what's wrong with you? I'm like you, you my problem. Like, and he yeah. just blows up seemingly out of nowhere at Q. Yep. And it's crazy. It's one of them scenes where you're just like, yo, he just flipped the switch. Yeah. I mean, it feels like he flipped the switch, but the movie has been kind of foreshadowing and yeah. building up to to this man, and then. It's crazy, man. Like, like you see him chest out. Like, it's not even like he's just arguing with his folks. He's almost chumping them. Like he, he, like him and Q. He's like, you he better get the wind beneath your, or uh, get the, the ground beneath your feet, partner. The wind beneath your back. Yeah, you know, yeah, like it's, it's weird, man. It's like it, it's he's he's chumping them in, in a sense. Like he feels like at that point he's a level above everyone else you know yeah. what i'm saying because he's more willing to do things that they might not be willing to do yeah for him it's, it's all about respect man and and but the way he's going to get it is, is, is crazy it's almost like a shortcut way you know what i'm saying like like whereas whereas you know q you know you'll probably end up getting some respect as a dj but you can't immediately touch and feel that you know what i'm saying that, that might be years down the road and not feared he wanted mm -hmm. to be feared that's the thing and like you said he wanted instant gratification and a lot of times you know when you're you're someone who totes that much anger and aggression inside you the first people that are going to feel it are those closest to you yeah. like before he started going out and about and and just doing all this stuff like 
Yeah. His folks feel it first. You, you know, know what I mean? The weird thing to me, though, is, you know, later on, you know, like I said, Q does this little audition thing, which I think is dope. It's, uh, um, um, it ends up being um, Queen Latifah. That, that's the people, the, the person that's taking the tapes for the auditions for the contest. And it's a cool scene with that. We get a, a cameo by Flex. But what happens, and they devise this plan, which is crazy, to rob old man Quillis' store. And I thought that was just so wild of a leap that even... The fact that Raheem was in on it and even um, still, you know, have convinced themselves to pull this off. And, and I think, um, to be honest, I think Raheem was the one, Raheem was the one who, got the, who gun. got the gun. Yes. <laughs> it's just wild In me. essence, even though Pac was the one taking charge, Raheem was the, like, almost like the leader. Like, he was the one yeah. that everybody kind of, like, yeah. followed. And he, and, and he had that, like, sense of leadership. But he also was probably the most like level head well also he had a different kind of responsibility though he's got a he's got a um i think he's got a baby he's mama got, he's got a baby mama yeah. Yeah. And, and the crazy part too we see that scene where uh special ed <laughs> yeah but just talking to his girl and, yeah and he goes out but then you look at special ed he looks like a guy he's got the um the bmw he you know what i'm saying it's it like he's getting yeah. money so i feel like in a way that makes sense why maybe raheem was swayed to get involved with the scheme too you know because it's like Absolutely. all right i don't care about the respect but i do want to get this money gotta get this you money know, get gotta my girl take, yeah i gotta take care of my kid at you, least you see in their interaction in the beginning like she's mm -hmm. fed up you know mm -hmm. she's like dude you don't have nothing to offer yeah. and you was messing with other chicks and then you know mm -hmm. do, 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 do. one of the weird things though to me though was this relationship that he has with um cindy from in vogue and i, yeah. I thought that was a bit problematic i'm like bro you you, you in high school <laughs> you know what i'm saying and you're messing with this She's clearly an adult, bro. She's like a nurse or something in a doc. So she's she, got to she be married. Least, she's kicking like, her yeah, ex-husband yeah, out when he first comes in there. Be, like, come yeah, on. She's like, married. like it, she's got to be at least like, let's just say conservatively to get that type of job, maybe 25. You get to the robbery, you know, and then they're, they're executing the robbery. And then Pac ha or Bishop has the gun <laughs> on. I mean, and dude is clearly... You yeah, know, he's totally surrendering, he's man. He's totally surrendered, hands up, face, you know, to the just wall. They already, him, they, yeah, they clean, <laughs> they clean the register up, and he just pops them right in the yeah. head. And you see, like, you get that sense, like, he didn't feel threatened. He, it wasn't, no, like, nothing, the, nothing. the store owner wasn't, <laughs> wasn't bucking back. Yeah. He just did it to see if he you know, My favorite part, though, they, 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 they run away. They, they, they're in some basement or some building. See, man, you shot Quillis. So he made a move. He made a move. <laughs> no, he made a move. Like, he didn't but he, make he didn't. a move. But, no, but you see, <laughs> like, you get move. that sense. Dude, yeah. he did it just to see if he could. And then it all just rolls downhill from there, he, dude. He been could, yo. He could, he could have, you know, from the moment he was ready to run in our bar, we knew he could have. Well, but it, 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 it like i wasn't surprised really at anything that happened at that scene i i knew it was gonna go there as soon as it happened just because this is how the movie has to go this yeah. is how we get this 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 villain role and honestly dude from that point on the film switches tone it kind of yes. becomes a horror thriller after that yeah because um because in the process of that they're arguing they're arguing over the gun and uh, Raheem is like, why'd you do that? And they're all like, yo, what did you do? And, and boom. And then he no, yeah, they start wrestling because Raheem was like, yo, we got to get rid of the yeah. gun. Like now, I mean, you know, this is not like a blueprint of how to commit crimes or nothing. But one would think that after, you know, a weapon that's used in a robbery turns into a murder weapon, you no longer want to have that weapon. But also, too, that weapon. At least that's it, what gives him his it, power. Yeah, at least in pot. That's, like, like, that's honestly, like, that's like, like, what's his name? Luke Skywalker yeah. giving away his lightsaber. So it's know? almost like the <laughs> gun is the juice, man. And dude, because well, you see it when he first gets the gun. When, yeah, when Ryan first goes with it. the gun, he's like, yo, and he's holding the gun. And like, all right, you know, he's like, I'm going to hold the gun because I got it. <laughs> you know, <I'm laughs> so like, like, you hold the gun because I already got it. Yeah. Yeah, but. Yeah, so you know him and Raheem arguing, then he shoots Raheem, and it just it that's when it really the tone really shifts, you know. Especially that's you know because everything's kind of quiet. I love when like it's it's a testament to the direction yeah. of it. Then you get that that tone when when Raheem gets hit, and you're like, whoa! It's funny though because that's yes, one of, yeah. that's one of these uh, that's that's one of this films like um, I guess you know edit editing issues or whatever like people always pointed out because during the scuffle 
Hawk has a gun in his like left pocket, mm -hmm. but then he pulls the gun that he shoots Raheem with that they're supposed to be fighting for, mm -hmm. like from behind. So he actually had two two guns. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or, or maybe they might have had a cut where he yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like with, with the yeah. editorial stuff, but, but yeah, that's but, that, but it's that's crazy. Pointed out. Then it, it's done. You know what did you do? You know, and, and it's just so crazy. Um, you saw him. He tried to take the gun or something like. But then it's crazy to me because then that's when Pox hit like. You know he he is what he is, but he's also an expert manipulator. That, that and and it's like you even get some of that earlier, like with that speech when 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 he was talking about you know when they were at Steele's house, you know mm -hmm. skipping school. It, it part of it was to you know stand up and say what you need to do. Well, part of it too was trying to manipulate them into doing what he doing feels. what he wanted to do. So right here you see Steele's crying. He pulls Steele closer. This this is probably the only moment I feel like where yeah, he got to dip the dip the other scene. But but this is like the only moment where I feel like he actually softened up and, and you get that friendship thing from him because yeah, he pulls still close he's wiping his tears he's he's building him up but even that's manipulative he's yeah. not doing that really because then he cares he, he's he, doing that to keep still from from from, from panicking from jumping and, and up and then up. possibly yeah. snitching and then yeah. he leans up on the wall he like pulls his hair he's like damn raheem mm -hmm. and then like you think like damn he really feels bad remorseful but no then he's like Why'd you try to take the gun, man? You know? Dude, it's so <laughs> crazy, man. Like, so, so, like, then, you know, all this stuff is going on. Um, You know, we, I do like the um the the questioning scene, yo. It's, oh, it's, I don't think it's as good as Menaces, but it's, it's really it's, good in its, in its own way, though, because with this one, you've got three different people, and it seems like these cops are treating all three of them differently. For some reason, they're extra hard on steel. You know, but then because he was the one who was most liable to break, he's in their mm, crime. Yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? And that's what yeah, they do. They prey yeah. on the weak. Ooh, and then, then that's the thing too. Why are you crying if, if you're not? Yeah. If, if you're innocent, and then and then also like like you said, like when it comes to this scene, not only do we get three different interrogations, but we see the the difference in their demeanors. Like you know, Q is sitting there, and you can tell he's kind of like he's tense, he's nervous but he's playing it cool. Whereas when you look at Bishop's character, he's laughing at him. It's almost like he's like, he's at the bar chopping it up with him. Just mm -hmm. he's laughing and smoking a cigarette, pooling. And then yeah. you got Steele yeah. just, just bawling, crying. Like, man, what are you and, then, laughing, man? and then Q is probably like how it would normally go. Like with Q is just not, yeah. it's not it's really like extreme you're, one way or another. It's, you're, 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 you're tense and blowing yeah. up on the inside, but you're being calm, cool, collected. Cause that's what his character portrayed mm -hmm. throughout the whole, the whole film. Anyways, mm -hmm. He was just the calm, cool, collective one until he gets pushed to the brink. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So the one that gets me after this man is um the the um I guess would it be the repass at the house at that scene, man? Is and the Pox acting is so great here. Yeah. You love to hate him, like like because they're chilling. They don't even know Pox coming through, and all of a sudden they just hear that voice. And he comes in. I don't know if he had a plate or food or flowers, some some shit. But I think flowers. But dude, he comes in. He hugs uh, Raheem's sister and and yo, and he gives Q the look over the shoulder. Oh my god! Yeah. And then he te starts telling his sister, he's like, "Yeah, man, you know, hey, man." Uh, and she's like, "Yeah, they don't have no leads." He's like, "Yeah, they catch you. I hope they catch you yeah, because, because if you know, ain't no telling what I'm gonna do if they if I find them. You know, I mean, he, dude, he was like, uh, but, he was brutal, dude. Yo, but, but they sell it so well, like even Mr. Um, <laughs> like, and they're just looking at this dude like the this audacity, is like, 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 imagine knowing what you know, and then yes. this dude is right there talking like he's talking, you just like, but this bro. is also, I feel this is the scene where the two of them start yeah, to fear. They realize they start to fear. They, they can't they realize he's gone. He's gone. Q's like, man, he's so desperate to avoid pie. He starts going back to school. And then yeah. it turns me out because he's in the locker. He's trying to open the locker. And the dude's like, damn, bro, it's been that long. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But dude, that's the other thing that trips me out too, because like, dude, the lockers are only but so big with yeah. that. So you get that you get that but camera works, angle. But, but you get that camera angle. That's the moment. That's what it is. He, he closes it and pops right there and it's so oh funny because this dude. is where you see the total transition. But that's where it becomes the horror movie to me. This is horror. It's like this dude's like I love it because like stalker. Yeah, because like <laughs> yeah, he yeah he turns very stalker and he's like rubbing his face and he got rings on every finger. It's like damn, you know what you did with your robbery money. You goes see sweets, same person that they got the, the revolver from. He's like I need some protection. And, and it's weird because Sweets is a weird character. You know, he has twenty five dollars, twenty five bucks, and she's like. 
And I guess because she knows his mom, she That's it. gives him the thing. And she like, tells him, you can't even buy a slingshot. Yeah, so she gives him the, the rinky dinkiest thing that she got. It, it must have been, it, I think it was a two it's shooter. Like a deuce deuce. It's like a 25. Oh, Jones, it don't, yeah. I don't even know. It, well, yeah, it had a clip because she puts the clip mm-hmm. in, but it looks like one of them joints that you pop open and <laughs> you yeah. put two little, two little bullets in there. And, and then, like, you know, because this is after, you know, he finds out what happened to Steel. So his thing is, like, I got to go find this guy, man. Cube. Took his 25 bucks, got a piece to protect himself, and then has the where for all to throw it in the river before yeah, he goes to yeah, meet the bishop. Because he's like, man, this ain't this ain't yeah, me. I don't want to kill this guy, really, you know? And it, we're not going to get into a shootout because in, in his mind, he's like, man, we were still, still my friends. friends. Yeah. We were still yeah. friends. And yeah, we he, he approaches him and, like that, which, which I thought was, was commendable. It was. At least, at least it, it shows that Q still had hope that. But you also you know, have to know your enemy. Like this, you you know? gotta know your I enemy. You know him though. And he, he just <laughs> took the risk, man. Like, I think that was a, a, a virtue, virtuous moment to be it honest. Was. Like, you know, no matter what happens, I'm still going to, this was my friend, dude. And like, maybe I might die doing this, but I feel it's, it's a Spider-Man thing, man. Like yeah. he did the right thing. He did. Know? He did. And, um, you know. With great power comes great responsibility. Yeah, but 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 Pac is not feeling it. And no, because he's, he's already in the deep end. Gets a spark in. He's chasing Q. They, Q they, and they, that's um that's the thing too, man. Like I don't know <laughs> how many how many times he racks off. Like mm-hmm. when they're running, I mean they're running through the streets of Harlem. Yeah, he definitely okay. put out more than and six he's, shots. He's man. right. I mean this and and. It was more like Pac spell. has a thirty-eight special. They hold six. Yep. Okay, and he's like, yeah, ta 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 ta. I caught him. Tat, he, he gets to like tat, tat, twelve tat, shots. Tat, I you know. In- and <laughs> now, what time did he stop to catch his breath or unload and reload? Yeah. So that's one hell of a yeah. thirty-eight special. But you uh, <laughs> but Q ducks into a party, and we get another great scene, man. That that elevator. Oh, when, um, when when it's uh, great when Pac walks in that day. He's like, she's gonna shoot me in the elevator. Full elevator. And he's like, and, and he's like, and yeah. man was like, <laughs> he's like, yeah. You know, everybody <laughs> scattered. Yo, they they running through the party. That's when we see Yo Yo. If you pay attention, nah. they're running through the party. Everybody's dancing, oh, and uh, Q goes out the window, and that's when you see Yo Yo. She's dancing, and um, they get up to the roof, and you know, there's uh more scuffling. <gasps> Excuse me on the roof. I think by then, I don't know how. I think he gets close to him. The gun falls out. Gun but, fall, yeah, because then um, I want to say then it's all somebody hands. gets hit with a two by four. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> they're fighting <laughs> they in the street now. They yeah. fighting in the street in his hands. And then, yo, it's so great. You know, we get that moment. You know, where, where you know they're scuffling and and, and Pac's hanging on the edge. Yeah, <laughs> which is which is great because the film starts off with a rock him song called "Know the Ledge." You know the knowledge, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it, it it's it feels so real, and like this is where you know the cinematography and the direction mm-hmm. is just it's really at the forefront because of the time of night and stuff. Like he's hanging over, but then like it almost looks like if he falls, he's falling into the abyss. Mm-hmm. Like I mean, it's yeah. so dark. Like uh, it's like a never ending fall. Yeah, and he and has in and, and, and for his life. In man. essence, he has fallen. To that darkness, yes. dude, at, at this yes. point, you know, Cube's trying, but he can't and hold he him. Right to he, he's, he's, and and, and that just shows, you know, testament to Cube for just him yeah. just being such a good guy because he's trying to save him. And he tells him, he's like, man, I can't hold you, B. I can't hold you. And then it just, the, the camera closes in on their mm-hmm. sweaty hands. Yeah. I mean, they've been fighting on the rooftop for about five yeah. minutes, plus all that running. Plus, I mean, you know. Plus, the dude is heavy, man. You yeah. know, like, I mean, just, uh, you know, a whole other person. Man, there are people that can't do a chin up let alone pull a whole body up okay this is someone else you know with one arm so yeah. you know i mean but he tried and then yeah man Pac just falls into into the darkness man oh what a what a compelling scene Ugh. yeah it, it just it, the whole story is just great man you know i feel like um you know it it you know, there, there are some stretches, you know, of the imagination, but as a tale, like like I said, it's a coming of age tale, it's a cautionary tale, it, it, it's a drama, it's, it's, it's a thriller, it, it's, it has horror elements, you know, all mixed in a one. And it's interesting because this film kind of foreshadows, you know, the other kind of films that Ernest Dickerson ends up working on, you know, like, yeah. like those, a lot of those elements from those films you find in Juice, man, you know what I'm saying? Yes. And, and it's, it, it's, it's, this is great, man. It's a really dope production. I think it still holds up. Um, it's a time capsule. I like how they use the music. I like how they blend, you know, the hip hop culture into it, you know, and, and but it's still telling a story that has universal appeal, you know, in my opinion. God bless.
Yeah. And and also, you know, this also this is one of the films that really, you know, was one of the pillars of setting the tone for, you know, the urban style films that yeah. followed after mm -hmm. this. I mean, some of them. I think it was Boys in the Hood. And, Boys in the Hood. Uh, and then we get Menace. Mm -hmm. And then also. But I think this was before Menace. Um, oh, was no. It? Or, no. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, this yeah, was yeah. before Boys in the Hood as well. Really? Yes. Boys in the Hood? When did, no, I think Boys and came out. And I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I want to say. Swear. I mean, I could be wrong. Um, this. This came out in 1992. Yeah, Boys in the Hood was 91. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, like, okay. I think this got made okay. because of Boys in the Hood. Because after that, it feels like a lot more of these style films were coming out. Yeah, because Boys in the Hood was such a success. They were giving, you know, maybe young black directors yeah. money to, to make, you know, because it sold, man. And that's the thing. That's kind of a mess up thing with Hollywood. But it's also can be a good thing sometimes because of the sense of Boys in the Hood. We got, you know, more films like this. Well, that, that, I mean, that, just, just that we're getting made. Just you know? think of all of, I mean, okay. So after that, we got Juice. After Boys in the Hood, we got Juice. We got Menace. We got South Central. Mm -hmm. We got Fresh. I mean, yeah. Uh, Gosh, um, I feel like there's there's still a few that I'm forgetting, but I mean, this it, it almost became like, you know, yeah, you know, because think about it. That year, you had Boys in the Hood, New Jack City, New uh, Jack. There, that's the other one I was, I yeah, was forgetting. Yeah. A lot of these things, man. It's just, um, you know, um, even King of New York, which was before this and that, but but I don't think King of New York was a little bit different. But you know, Blood in, Blood out. You know what I'm saying? Things like that, where you were getting stories based around. You know these, you know, urban, you know, more black yeah. urban characters, deep cover. You know what I'm saying? Things like this were getting uh, greenlit more. You know, yeah, because of the success of Boy and Boys in the Hood. You know, yeah, yeah. You're right. Fresh was uh, 94. Even Dead Presidents yeah. 95 was was riding off this a little bit, man. Yeah. So, and you know, even going all the way up to later, like way later, Be Belly. Be Jersey Drive, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, dude, New Jersey Drive was just dope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Baby Boy, you know. Yeah, they, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like this, this, you know, this was one of those films that it really helped set the tone and, like I said, open the door. Uh, and remember, like Jason's lyric and poetic justice. Yeah, they oh, even like it, it, it just takes seventy three. That's it, Pac it, elevating. Now he's he's yeah. got a he's got a starring role now. And like he, I mean, yeah. even though he's starring in this, but but he's like one of the main characters. You know, the the, the Superman. You know leading yeah. this thing it's not like a more of a ensemble cast you know like um like in um juice you know right yeah man and actually yeah and it also showed like he had a heart strapped oh yeah. remember, remember strap? strap was amazing bro <laughs> like it's so yeah 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 it, it's dope man this 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 definitely still holds up and it's a classic and 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 i'll probably watch this film at least you know once a year man like, yeah once, once you see Pac on the screen you can't look away man he's probably one of the greatest like hood villains um ever man it's, it's give me an idea i might do like a, a video on hood villains just just a quick rundown man i got some ideas for you know black history month kind of stuff so i'm thinking about you know and like you said coming this stuff together with with his you know what he did in this film and i feel like it also like it just boosted his hip-hop career mm -hmm. in such a way you know what i'm saying yeah. like this really kind of like set the tone for you know the you know the imagery and, and and the person he was you know wanted the world to see him as yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah. as a whole you and, know and i think it also his performance was so great in this it raises the bar it's it's about it was about an hour and a half long give or take something like that yeah yeah, yeah. about about 95 to 100 minutes just worth of like you said every everything it gives us it gives us everything that we need in a film um and you know i've seen this film a thousand times over and i'll still watch it and enjoy it just as much as i did the first time mm -hmm. 20 years from now yeah and if you, you know what i mean watch it um it's, it's always on dude it's, it's streaming on stuff like that it's on vh1 um tonight at midnight <laughs> well actually no it says february 7th my bad at midnight on vh1 <laughs> but yeah i think that's it man we probably rocked y'all you know enough of y'all time man uh this is Big Corey. Catch me at Monkey Blood on Twitter, Instagram. Follow the podcast at From Canopy on Twitter and at From the Canopy on Instagram. You can email us from the Canopy Pod at gmail.com. And it's Bobby Blockbuster. You can catch me at Bobby Blockbuster 118 on Instagram. Yeah. We <laughs> use the juice. <laughs> All right, y'all, man. <laughs>